everyone and welcome back to the chronic corner i'm lauren and this episode is all about dyspnea now dyspnea is actually the medical term for shortness of breath so there is no difference between the two a lot of us with dysautonomia experience shortness of breath difficulty breathing um it's so so common so we want to do a quick video to give you a brief ex explanation of it and at the end if you'd like to learn more please do so through the link in the description below so, okay, so dyspnea, like I said, is shortness of breath. It is typically caused by a lung or heart condition, but can be a symptom of anything from asthma, allergies, anxiety. It can be a side effect of a medication. Like I said, it's super, super common in those with dysautonomia as well. Um, and there's kind of a more short-term version of it and a chronic version of dyspnea. And this is what the majority of us experience. Most people have shortness of breath after exercising, okay? That's, that's typical. And their body can regulate it and get back to normal very quickly. Whereas when you have dysautonomia, you could do something as little as climbing stairs, like one flight of stairs standing up too fast, uh, turning your head the wrong way, <laughs> not moving even at all. And you can all of a sudden, bam, have shortness of breath. It is crazy and it is so frustrating, but a lot of us experience this on top of all of our other symptoms. And a lot of people describe it as feeling like you have to really breathe deeply to get air into your lungs, um, tightness in your chest, working really, 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 really hard to breathe, rapid breathing, um, and some kind of like wheezing almost. And it's important to remember too that a lot of times know that this is gonna be assumed to be anxiety. A lot of people and medical professionals will say, oh, you know, you can't breathe. Oh, you're having an anxiety attack or something. Well, if you have dysautonomia and you have shortness of breath or asthma or whatever condition and you start to not be able to breathe, no wonder you're gonna have a panic attack. You can't breathe, so you're gonna get anxious about it, just like your other dysautonomia symptoms, you know? So it's important to remember to advocate for yourself and know that this is a condition. It's not necessarily all in your head that, no, this started off as part of your dysautonomia. Of course, always make sure to get everything checked out by a doctor to make sure it's not something more severe but it is a very typical symptom of ours. So for more things dysautonomia, visit dynat.org. Thank you so much for watching.